Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. We're just on site on another lighting project where we're going to show you a little bit more how to install landscape lighting and get into the nuts and bolts of it, as well as show you some ideas on another project that we've done and some different things that you can use or some different lights that you can use on different projects. So, um, you know, one thing in determining the lights is, is just really going around and seeing what's going to look nice. Two or three quick ways to do that is one is just with a flashlight at night going and shining the light on a couple areas to see what looks good. Uh, another way is these battery uh, operated packs that you can basically, they run off AA batteries that you can hook the actual fixture that you're using into. And then you can go around and you can start lighting up some things and see what looks good. Another uh, cheaper alternative, if you bought a good landscape light, you should be able to run that light with just a simple nine volt battery, just by taking the two wires from your fixture and holding them onto the terminal should turn on your light and you can go around and you can play with different areas and see what's going to look good on your property. So on this project we've determined that we're going to use really four different types of lighting styles. The first one we're going to use is we're going to use some in-ground lights uh, that we're going to get actually in the ground so they can be mown over that we're going to light some big spruce trees here behind me. We're going to use some uh, accent and up lights that we're going to have at the base of a couple trees. Uh, to get some light up into there as well as we're going to use some wash lights this house has some beautiful stonework that they've done on it that we're going to use those to light those areas up it's just a little bit of a softer light and then the last one we're going to use is we're going to use some hanging lights we're actually going to get them up in the trees and have them shining down to just light up the foliage and, and the branches and stuff from above so those are the four lights that we're going to choose for this project Basically the first step once I've determined what lights I'm going to use is I actually go around and I just preliminarily place all the lights. So put the lights where you think you're going to want them and just have them set so that you can go around and then wire everything together afterwards. So for this spot we're going to use a wash light um, because we have some nice rock work and stone work here we want to cast some shadows off of that. So basically a wash light all it is is very similar to an accent light. The only difference is it tends to have a wider beam angle usually around 120 degrees as well as it's got um, a frosted filter on it that just softens the light so it creates less hot spots. So this is a light that I would use anywhere that you're trying to light up the house or or light up some stonework or anything like that it's a great light for that so that's why we've chosen to use a wash light in this area so here's just an example again of our uh, up light um, accent light different people call it different things but you'll find these in 90 percent of landscape lighting jobs really just used to light up the the trunk and the base of a tree and, and get the light up into the foliage um, we do use these a lot and if you do have an older uh, an older landscape lighting system, maybe it's a halogen system that the lights just don't work anymore. Uh, generally, these are pretty easy to go and retrofit into LED. Um, they all come apart differently, but usually there's just a bulb in there that'll pull out of a socket and you get a good outdoor rated LED bulb, uh, usually called an MR16 bulb, and you can just pop that right into the socket and retrofit your existing system to LED that easily so well, that's why we like these lights because it does give us a bunch of options and it does look really good when you can light up a tree with them. So behind me we've got this great landscape spot with this nice ash tree and what we've chosen to do here is actually light it from above with one of our hanging lights. So basically this will actually go up in the tree and shine down uh, on the foliage, on the ground cover, as well as on the trunk to give us a little bit of uh, just a different lighting technique than you usually see it just throwing one at the base. We did also throw a light at the base here just because um, it looks good when you can get it from above and below. Um, but yeah, just an example of how we would go and use a hanging light um, up in a tree in an area like this. Just want to explain a little bit about the transformers. So basically the brains of your system after you've placed your lights and you know what kind of lights you're going to use, the next step is determining what size transformer you're going to use. So uh, a real simple way to do this and if you're using a good quality light, um, when you buy it it'll usually tell you how many watts that fixture is actually going to produce. If not, it'll usually tell you if you actually look on the bulb, it'll tell you if it's four and a half watts, five and a half watts. Um, typically for LED that's about as big as you're going to get but um, on, the, on the box it should say how many watts if you're buying a good quality fixture. So you know on this project we've got 10 lights. Each of these lights uses approximately four and a half watts so 10 times four and a half is 45 watts. So we want to size our transformer just slightly bigger than that. Um, the better quality light that you have the less you got to oversize your transformer if you're using a really uh, cheap 
cheap light or a, a low quality light, you probably want to give yourself a little bit more room because the lights can actually use more power than that might actually say. With a good quality fixture, you're pretty safe if you just oversize it a little bit. So we're going to use a 60 watt transformer here from Kitchler, uh, which is really simple to use. It's got a small timer on it as well as a photo cell. And you can see we basically just mounted it to the side of the house here uh, with a couple screws. And once we get all our wire laid out, we're going to wire those into here. And then something we've done to kind of take it to the next level and make this Wi-Fi is we've added something called a... Uh, it's from Weon. It's an outdoor Wi-Fi timer switch that uh, we use with a lot of our transformers as well as you can use it with Christmas lights or whatever. And, and how we use this is basically we just plug this into the, our GFCI receptacle and then we plug our transformer directly into that. And then from there, now we can run all our lights uh, from a simple mobile app from Weon. Uh, and we do this a lot of the time. It just gives us that flexibility and it's a cool way to, to add Wi-Fi to your system. Hey, so we're just wiring up our lights here now. Uh, my favorite uh, connectors to use here is these snap lock connectors. Um, they're just, they're super easy to use. They hold the wires tight. They're gel filled so they keep it completely waterproof. Um, usually what I do is after we've got the wire ran out, I usually leave a little bit of a loop at every light so that if we need to move it um, or make any changes or, or anything like that we've got some extra room to play with and simply just cutting into our wire coming in and going out strip the ends of that just a just an inch or two just enough so we can get it into the snap lock connectors And then we'll also have our two wires that go to our fixture. So in this case, um, we've actually got an in-ground fixture that we're using. So we've got that and we've got the wires there. So we just twist off the ends so we can get them in nice and clean to our snap lock connectors. And these snap lock connectors that we're using here are pretty much good from uh, from 18 gauge wire all the way to 10 gauge uh, low voltage wire. So what you do is they just open up. There's a couple ports on the bottom. You've got your, your wire coming in, goes into one. Push it right to the end. You've got your wire going out, goes into the other port. And then you've got your fixture wire, goes into the last port and then you snap that tight and you can see those wires aren't coming loose and then you do that with your other set of wires open it up you get your fixture wire it goes in one your wire coming in goes into another and your wire going out into the last port and then that just snaps tight and again, those wires are nice and sealed. Take any extra wire, just put it down to the bottom, place your fixture, and you're good to go. So we've got our lights placed, we've got our transformer hooked up, uh, all our wiring connections are done. Um, now we're just testing the lights, so we've, uh, we've tested everything, turned on the transformer. All our lights work, I always recommend doing that before you go and start uh, finally burying everything. Um, but since that's all done, we know all our lights work. Last thing is we're just gonna bury all our extra wire and we're gonna place and set our lights. And if there's any final little adjustments to be done, we'll do those. I recommend coming back at night when you actually have the lights on and you can see how everything looks to come back and make any last minute adjustments uh, just to make sure that everything looks good. But once you've done that, that's pretty much it. Now your landscape lighting system is ready to go.